Well, boys, this is why I always tell us to focus on assets that make sense because this is about to get ridiculous. Now, I'm going to give you an example of this brother who lost his channel on these YouTube streets. He's getting terminated. And shout outs to the brother. He definitely built it up a great channel. But this is why I've always told you guys, I do YouTube for fun. I enjoy it. I never take it serious as a business. People come and say, hey, man, let's do the SEO. Let's do tags. Negative. It's not a business to me. It's the worst business. Why is it the worst business? Check this out. Yes, what you just read is real. It's not clickbait. It's not something for me to generate views. I will be losing my channel. That's that's that. That's it. There's no other way around it. Yeah, I will be losing my channel. Um, but before we get to why I'll be losing my channel, I'm going to say this video is not going to end with some with something surprising or something happy at the end. There's no there's no gold pot of gold in the end of the rainbow. Um, basically, I got extorted. I got extorted very badly by someone. But before we get into that, I'm going to say this. Now, fast forward, the guy basically says something happened. Somebody reached out, said they were going to do an intro. They did the intro for him and they didn't charge him any money. Later on, they came and said, hey, I want this much money. Now, it was months later. And then now when months later came out and he didn't give him the money or maybe things just didn't work out in a negotiation, he thought it was for free. The guy says this is the price, whatever the case was. He struck down his channel for termination or another flag. He had another warning. Maybe you get three strikes and you're out. And so this being the third one, it creates a problem for him. And now it's going to get terminated because of the strikes. And he has to figure out the legal battle and then try to get his channel back. But until then, he has made a new channel. He's somewhere overseas traveling. He did a GoFundMe so he can actually get money because his channel's now demonetized and it will be deleted in seven days. Watch it, check. Or take his channel down. And extortion, man, that's basically, I haven't even heard from this guy. I haven't heard from this guy in a year and a half, which is crazy. I have now five so, so see, he hasn't heard from the guy in about a year and a half. And as you can see, you received a copyright strike. You now have five copyright strikes. As a result, your channel is scheduled to be terminated in seven days. And then I guess how we process requests to remove content and we use a combination of automated systems and human reviews to process removal requests or what to do next. It says your channel will remain live for the next seven days to allow you to seek a resolution and keep your channel up during this time. And you will not be able to upload new videos and strikes on your channel will not expire. If you believe that it is not fault of your own something, something, and then it like sets finer details for correction, etc. My guys, this is why I don't really rock with YouTube in a serious way. And, and it's like, yeah, it's a misunderstanding, but bro, this guy, I think he's been online for almost like a decade, a decade building a brand. And, and it's nothing crazy. It's not like he said anything crazy, right? Just some weird stuff happened with some type of, let's say, agreement that he made with someone, then maybe like, I don't know the particulars because he has to go to court to figure it out. And I don't like to speculate. A lot of people might do reaction videos, which I don't care about the reaction videos because I want y'all to do a reaction video so people can go to my other channel. But um, I'm just going to, I don't know what I'm going to do, honestly. But in this meantime, I don't even know if I'm going to stay in time and continue doing videos because, uh, you know, I can go home and work on this and then try to figure out what I'm going to do. But in the meantime, I am still going to try. Well, that's not going to end. That's not going to stop. I'm still going to put out videos. Just going to have to try to rebuild the channel. Um, hopefully with the name checking effect, people would would just type in my name and find me. The ones who remember me, like, yo, what happened to Check? So hopefully I might, the channel could grow because of that, but it's not easy to grow on YouTube, uh, especially as a brother. I had my channel for five years. There's people that come up fast and there's people that takes time. I had my channel for five years. So um, it's extortion. And I feel like karma's gonna come back to this person, man. That's Whenever you do something dirty and wrong, man, it comes back to you, man. But I'm a person who lives on principle and code. If you wanted something for this, man, just ask me. I would've gave you something. But to go and set some extortion thing like this, man, it's gonna come back to you. Because even if, Let's say I do get my channel back. Well, let's say, you know, whatever, man. I just feel like it's bad. But, you know, at least this person should have said, hey, man, uh, for this, this is what I want. You know, but this is a game. And I think this person done this to other people. So anybody who's content creative, if you ever get reached out by someone, man, and unfortunately it's a brother, sucks. Be careful. I just thought because I didn't sign any contracts or anything, all what he was saying. And once he didn't find, we didn't get any deal, the man left. And But he had a game plan. He, he planted a seed and he let it grow. And he said, okay, now it's time to collect.
Now, guys, like I say, when when you get in these disputes, just hold off. Just say I'm in a legal situation. And then those are all the details that you usually want to give away. OK, just because, you know, you're about to go to court for it. Uh, uh, he was smart enough not to disclose the gentleman's name, but just like wait, because you're going to probably go seek to sit down with a lawyer. And then the lawyer is going to be like, all right, this is the story we have to put together. Then if you made a video online and it doesn't match up with the actual story, or you might have said something incorrectly and miscommunicated on your video, it, it'd be hard to do it now and go back and create this narrative because now the opposing team, the defense or the plaintiff can be like, well, this is what you said online. Why doesn't it match up with your statement? So just hold off and say, hey, look, I'm going through a legal battle. And then don't try to explain it. Just my advice, okay? Now, why? Why? Why, Bert? That, that, that's him. I'm like, bro, it's the worst thing ever. Like, I never looked at YouTube as a money thing. Like, I get money. But let me just give you an example, all right? So when comparing investments in YouTube, Instagram, and real estate, so we got our real estate, right? We love real estate, and the stock market is completely fine. Right? It often presents a low risk option with more predictable returns. And while social media platforms have higher risk due to potentially volatility in earnings and platform policies, here's a breakdown. So the YouTube and Instagram, right? So let's just use that as an investment. People say, start a channel. Uh, you, could, you could make millions and da, 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 da. What's the success rate? How many people actually make millions? Well, YouTube and Instagram have the potential for exponential growth with creators earning millions from ad revenue, sponsorships, and merchandise if they achieve substantial followings. Now, however, success rates are low. I don't want to get into an investment where the success rate is low. I might as well go out into the basketball, basketball court and start dribbling and hoping that I could become Kobe Bryant because those are about the same odds that you have becoming very successful on YouTube. On YouTube, over 75% of channels make less than $100 annually. So 75% of everybody making $100. Do you think the 75% of those channels put zero money into their YouTube or did they pay more than $100? They probably pay $100 a month for some type of film editing equipment, some AI, artificial intelligence software, or just even for like StreamYard. <laughs> Right? Success requires significant time, consistency, and niche targeting. Now, the risk. These are the biggest risk, in my opinion. Right? Uh, I wouldn't do it even if I was like, all right, I'm going to be the 90. I'm going to be the top 25% who make buku money. This termination and demonetization is alone good enough for me. Both platforms are governed by strict policies accounts can be demonetized or banned for violating content guidelines even inadvertently so of course they're like yeah well if you make a mistake then you should okay yes mistakes or you intended the copyright yeah you get blank bans and people be like follow the rules but even by mistake my guy youtube channels are particularly vulnerable to algorithm changes or ad apocalypse scenarios Dependence on trends. Now, the platform algorithms favor trendy or viral content, which can be hard to replicate consistently. And I'm not even worried about that for the most part. If you get a good, loyal fan base, you can just go. But the part is just a violation of contents and guidelines. And even inadvertently, it's no separation between those differences, right? Now, you have the potential to diversify income through sponsorships, memberships, and products. But as you can see, some of these sponsorships or operations and partnerships could be like complete scams that cause you to get a copyright strike and now you got to go to court and you never been to court then you do a youtube a youtube video about it and then you blow up your case <laughs> and it relies heavily on personal branding which can both be a strength and limitation now real estate it's very predictable right real estate offers steady cash flow through Realtor, realtor, uh, rental income, excuse me, tax benefits and potential appreciation. Now, historic data shows long-term growth for property values, providing a reliable avenue for wealth building. And the returns are often consistent, especially with well-researched investments in high demand locations. Now, you have risk still, right? But it's just market cycles and upfront costs. And remember, we house hack over here and we get grants. Last time I checked, there's not too many grants for actual YouTube.
Now, uh, let's look at this comparison of success rates and risk. A higher percentage of success. So real estate is generally a safer bet with more predictable returns. While social media offers a higher reward for top creators, the likelihood of sustained success is low. Right? This guy was a top guy. He was a top G. 500,000 subscribers. He's up there with the freaking one percenters. And you still get demonetized. Lower risk of loss. Now, real estate avoids the platform risk, demonetization, and termination, and often offers tangible assets, then retain value even during economic downturn. It's more harder for the county to come out with a rent moratorium uh, or whatever it was called, a rent hold or a pause on your rentals or rent control. Right, like these are things that could be corrected, but are extremely rare in comparison to violating some policy that's changed on the YouTube platform and you get demonetized, or some normies just putting in reports on you. Now, the conclusion for long term wealth building and risk mitigation, real estate is a smarter choice for most investors. However, YouTube or Instagram can be lucrative side projects for those willing to invest and build a brand while acknowledging the higher risk and uh, variabilities of success. If you pursue social media, consider diversifying income streams to reduce dependency on platform policies. Again, this is why we, we focus on things that could build wealth at Wealth Warrior, right? Stocks, barns, work your W-2 job and buy real estate and do house hacking. It's that simple, right? That's all we do. Commercial real estate is completely fine. But trying to do this new age stuff, especially something like that, you could just somebody click a button or an algorithm gets you in the algorithm and you lost all your money. You lost your whole entire channel. Like, bro, I didn't get a copyright strike because all I do is have to copy the actual lease terms or the contract. It, you know, I get to copy the industry. I, <laughs> I can't copy if I'm copying on YouTube and Instagram, I'm getting sued or getting terminated or demonetized. But if I'm copying in real estate, it's completely free game, right? Like go ahead, copy the sheet, write your rental contract, just like everybody else write it. And then make this money. 90% of millionaires come from real estate. Okay. So why are we talking about some dang YouTube in space where we could be focused on how to purchase an asset, how to get money down. And anyways, you got to live somewhere YouTube in or not content creator or not, you need a home, focus on real estate, so keep doing your job, keep investing in the markets and find a house hack. It's pretty simple. Boom. You're winning. Get out of here. Well, for I'll see you in the next one.